ウォールシーナの扉をすべて閉鎖せよ避難民を何人たりとも入れてはならんぞ私も加勢しよう<笑>ドリスザックレイ彼らの判断は意外だったかのザックレイ相当いやちっとも先ほどの報告は誤報ですご安心ください今現在巨人の襲撃は確認されていませんな貴様何の真似だ首謀者ならわしじゃ先ほど駐屯兵団と調査兵団は同調していないと申し上げましたが一言言い忘れましたわいあなた方にも同調していないと Before the video starts, Darkest Knight here with a quick announcement. As you may have seen in the previous clip, Lion and I are currently in university. Therefore, we can't dedicate that much time to the mod right now, but once things have settled down, everything will be up and running again. We might release a dumped down version for one point, uh, one point, uh, a dumped down Titan version for 1.12.2 though. It all depends on a currently running poll, link in the description. I'm saying for one. 1.12.2 because we will port the mod to a higher version, 1.15.2 to be specific. 15.2 because this is currently the version with the most mods and Forge for 1.15 has some nice updates we'd like to make use of. The port wouldn't just be a port though, it would come with a cannon and three dimensional maneuver gear overhaul. Afterwards we'll do Titans properly. And by the way, The dumped down Titan version would feature Titans walking around, attacking villagers and players, spawning, and a hitbox in the net neck. So,、uh, no fancy animations, special tags, or something else. That's it from me, though, so let's go on with the tutorial. Also, with me. Hello, everyone. I am Darkest Knight from Lion Mods, and today I'll show you the up until now existing core features of our Attack on Titan Minecraft mod. I'm not the most talkative guy, so I'll be only explaining stuff when it's necessary. First up, I'll start with armor and cosmetics or accessories. I'll go over all the recipes and then we'll see how they look and what they can do. As you can see, there are two ways to get the emblems either by crafting them or by cutting them out of their respective jackets, like Levi did in Season 1 after the Female Titan arc. The key has no crafting a recipe, you have to find it in the world once we add some structures, etc. Here you can see the different armors, how they would look on a player. Normally, there would be an emblem on the shoulders and、uh, on the chest too, but the Tectra's head would have to be、uh, even more high、uh, definition or high, resol high resolution to feature them. And high resolution res、uh, Tectra's aren't very friendly towards. Low end or middle end PCs, you know. We try to keep it as simple but detailed as possible. Now, let's equip some of the stuff here. 
I like the military police emblem the most, so I'll go with this stuff. First we have Kenny Set. Nothing too special here, it gives one, uh, one point of armor. The uniform, I think it's a bit better than leather, but I'm not quite sure. Then for the uh, accessories or cosmetics, you have this second tab in your survival inventory. Uh, note that our inventory won't necessarily work if you have baubles or other mods installed that override the vanilla inventory. But here in the second tab we have five slots. This one's for the eyes, this one's for the eyes too, this one's for the neck, the body and the cape. First let's equip the cape and take off the head. This is the cape when I'm standing and when I'm walking around it flaps behind me. The faster you go the stronger the flapping. Here is this toggle button and if you press it you'll put on the hood. The hood is in so far special that if you'll use it on a Minecraft server with your friends they or other people in general can't see your name tag. You can turn this feature off in the config but it's nice to have. Now let's go to the eyewear, the goggles as Hanji, uh, Hanji would wear them. Jeek's glasses. A mm, uh, monocle if you want to be a rich person. And for the second slot, we have the eye patches. Again, for both eyes, just like the monocles. I'll actually keep this one. And if you're wondering why we have two different eye slots, most of you have figured it out by now. You can combine the primary eyewear with the secondary. Secondary would be the eye patches. So yeah, now I be season four hundred, end of season three hundred. Yeah. Now let's get to the neckwear. We have the basement key. Uh, first of all, show off the model. Later, it can be used for some special stuff in the basement. But for the for the time being, you can just put it here. It's hard to see, so yeah, that's better. Then we have Mikasa scarf. Levi's escort. And the three necklaces worn by the commanders of each military branch. Green for the Survey Corps, as it is worn by Erwin. Purple for the garrison, worn by Pixis. And red for the military police worn by Nile. Last but not least, the body wear. I'll take off the oh, I'll take off the jacket after the sash. The sash is worn by Pixis in season one, as far as I can remember. And 
And now the Eldian armband, which, yeah, the Eldians have to wear in Malay. And with this, our first part of the tutorial would be concluded. So, let's go on with the blocks and machines. Same pattern as before, recipe, then function. Let's start with the evaporator. The evaporator's purpose is to produce gas, which is done by heating those ice burst shards. Dropped by ice burst stone. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm starting to emit some steam, smoke, gas, call it whatever you like. So. These can be, uh, in order to need gain the, get the shards, you have to destroy these with an iron pickaxe or higher. And you may have noticed the particles coming from me. That's because, uh, that's, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. These stones uh, are heated and once they're heated, they burst, which produces the gas used for the three-dimensional maneuver gear. So if you get too close to a source of heat, which would be any light source, you experience a little explosion. Yep. There you saw it. Uh, actually blew up a bit of this building. The amount of ice burst shards you have in the inventory gets decreased since they exploded and you might take some damage. My armor took some at least. To prevent the shards from bursting, you have to put them in one of these ice burst containers, which can be opened with shift right click. Now that the shards are stored, you can put them into the evaporator, which I'll be um, building now. There we go. Something I forgot to mention, uh, it's not just the shards, the ice burst stone, you, which can be found in caves, and caves only, will also burst if it's too close to a heat source, so be careful while placing your torches. Well, the evaporator will process each shard now, turning it into gas which will be stored in this tank. The evaporator itself can also hold a small amount of gas. Once all shards have been processed, you get the canister back, as you can see here. This is the overall process. This is the process of, of each shard. Uh, shard. But for the time being, let's move on. I actually need another one of those. So, let's place them down. These blast furnaces only work if you use lava as a fuel. It has two functions. Smelting materials into one, uh, 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 sm smelting two different materials into one, and multiplying ores. In order to get ultra hard steel, you have to put obsidian and iron ingots, uh, iron ingots and obsidian into 
the blast furnace. Ultra hard steel, as you may might have seen, is already used in the army boots and the gas tanks recipe, as well as the uh, ice burst canisters. This takes a while. So let's move on to the next feature. Multiplying ores. This works with iron and gold. If you put the iron into one of these slot slots, you'll get one to two ingots from each ore. But if you divide them equal or if you put uh, if you fill both slots with iron ore, you can get two to four ingots. Yeah, the ultra hard steel is done. Ultra hard steel is used in various items in the mod. We'll go over most of them later. And the last thing concerning the blast furnace is that if you put ultra hard steel and a diamond into it, it will smelt them together into a reinforced diamond, which is uh, which currently can be used to craft the, the reinforced pickaxe. And while this is running, I'll go cover the last two blocks. The wall and glowing ore. The wall is pretty self-explanatory. You'll need it to keep out titans. Also, it's near indestructible. I say near because you can destroy it with a reinforced pickaxe, which is made from reinforced diamond. I'll show you this once we get to the tools. The glowing ore is in the anime or manga from the Rice Chapel. It's the material the underground chapel is made out of. You can't find it in the world yet, but once we add this structure it will be obtainable. And it, if you uh, farm it, I think I need a diamond pickaxe for this. Hopefully I'm wrong. Well, um, yar yar days. Let's grab one real quick. Quick, yeah. If you destroy them with a diamond pickaxe, you get these glowing ore rocks, which are used in other items too. Now all processes should be done. Yeah, here we have some iron ingots. Uh, yeah, the reinforced diamond is already done. And the ice burst shards have all been processed. Here's the gas uh, gauge has moved a little bit. And fun fact, you can put some hoppers onto the evaporator, automating the uh, refill and yeah, the, the process refilling uh, ice burst canisters and draining the already finished ones yeah but i don't actually know how to do it maybe lion can explain it sometime but this would be it for blocks and machines third on our list are the tools here are the recipes This is the one item the glowing ore rock is used for. The one item the reinforced diamonds are used for. Let's go with the flare gun. This will go rather quick. The flare gun is pretty simple. You have this flare gun. You have this neat animation for your arm while holding it. And if you take some flares, as I have, and press shift right click while it's in your main hand, this GUI opens and you could uh, can put one of the flares inside. And the next time you just press right click, it will launch a flare. Another way to reload the flare gun is by putting 
a flare into your offhand, pressing right click, and then right click again, which launches launches the flare. And something I wanted to show you, but I failed, uh, is that the flare actually bounces off surfaces you shoot it at. I have to choose a good angle. Yeah, angle. Uh, let's try this. This area isn't good for shooting flare guns, not gonna lie. Uh, one last attempt. Well, this worked fantabulous. Let's just shoot all the others too, because why not? The flares, the flares actually do like one heart or half a heart damage, but it's not much, so I wouldn't even bother to use it to hurt enemies. The lamp does exac exactly what the lamp's supposed to do. For this, I'll switch into. Um, ah, there. I switch to night. Here is a little bit darkness. If I take the lamp into my hand, I shine light onto the area I. Well, into the direction I look. The lamp too comes with a neat animation. This is actually a real light block, so to say. So uh, the place I illuminate with this light can't uh, be used for mob spawning. Next up we have the injections. The syringe and injections don't do much. The um, yeah, the Titan injection is used to turn you into a pure Titan, but this doesn't work yet. The Royal Blood injection will be a surprise tool that will help us later once we actually have the founding Titan. You can store the uh, in uh, yes the Titan injection and the royal blood into in uh, these test tubes too. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. You can still use the syringe though, just not to turn yourself into a Titan. You press red cl uh, right click with it. You get some debuffs. And lightning strikes from above. Yeah. Last but not least, the reinforced pickaxe. Again, it's the only tool able to destroy the wall. In general, it's better than your average diamond pickaxe. So, let's destroy the wall. This still takes a while. There you have it. And this would conclude our third part, the tools. Weapons will go rather quick too. They are kind of an extension to tools. We have a rifle. A knife. Cannons. and ammunition for the rifle and cannons. To shoot the rifle, you need bullets, obviously. Just press right click and then you'll see the bullet disappeared. 
After about 3 seconds, the sound can be heard, meaning that the rifle is ready to go. And then you just have to press right click again to shoot. It does about 2.5 hearts damage. So, uh, let's summon in something. Uh, slash summon. There you go. The rifle has a durability of 50. And again, a little animation which may or may not be improved in the future. The knife can be used to attack others, but later it will be used for titan shifting, like you know, Ymir, Reina, and many other just no, many others just use a knife to slash their wrist or their hands to trigger the transformation. The cannons do some block damage, so I will present them later once I'm outside the city. Now we're here, the moment you all have waited for. The three-dimensional maneuver gear or ODM gear. You know the drill, recipes, then explanations. So, blade parts can be used to repair blades using an anvil. Uh, I'll show you. But first I have to equip all this stuff, so I should start with that. Maybe I should have gotten some filled canisters too. Let's fix that real quick. Yeah, so um, how do you equip all this fancy stuff? Let me show you. As you could see, you have to be in game mode zero. The inventory features two new slots for the harness or belt and the ODM gear and once these are equipped you'll get the new inventory uh, tab where you can equip the handles, blades and thunder spears respectively. Oh and of course gas cartridges. Um, maybe you have noticed that these two slots were blocked. This way you won't be able to equip more blades than normally possible. So uh, let me show you. If I draw the blades you can't put anything in here. Really simple. Before I go over the controls, I will show you uh, how you can repair a blade. No. This blade it has been uh, damaged, or is damaged now. Let's put it back. And take it out. Simply put the blade and the blade part into the anvil and you get a fully repaired blade back. Again, no damage. Oh, um, while using the blades you can dual wield, which makes sense. And if you press shift R The blades get, uh, you put the blades back into the scab scabbard and equip the thunderous spears instead. These are um, 
pretty destructive, so I'll show them like the cannons once we are outside the city. Oh, and another thing, uh, the blades are already attached to the handles. If you don't want this to be the case, you have to have like one or two, three uh, free blade slots. Yeah. To get the handles, you have to press H. And to swap between blades, as you can see, these two slots are selected. Hold R and press left click and right quick, uh, click. You may have noticed the blades are shown on the model and if you change the blade, it also changes on the model. Oh yeah, and if you have no blades equipped at all and no cartridges, it also shows on the model. So, how does one use the ODM gear? In the bottom corners you can see your gas and which hook is currently used. In basic mode you will use both hooks at the same time, but in advanced mode, which I am which I am using, you can use them separate. Now, press Y and you should see this ODM icon over your XP bar. Now vanilla controls are overwritten, so you can't open the inventory with E or drop items with Q. Instead, if you have the handles in both hands, you can use E and Q to shoot the hooks. If you're pressing E and Q simultaneously, both will be shot simultaneously. In advanced mode, uh, yeah. Uh. In basic mode, E shoots both hooks, so uh, Q wouldn't work in basic mode. If you got your hooks out, you can press V or hold V to extend the cables. And to reel them in, you have to hold C. Now if you press F, you see the outline, the outline around uh, my gas bars has turned red. This means that boost mode is activated. If you use W, A, uh, yeah, S and D or space, you'll get a gas boost. Let's show you in third person. Also, if boost mode is activated, you'll get an emergency boost. If you fall, it'll stop you negating all the fall damage. This can be turned off in the config. Let's show you... Uh, no fall damage. There are two things I'll have to explain. But then I'll show you the ODM gear in action. And these are, uh, if your cables are stretched and boost mode is activated, you can hold space to receive an upward boost. Let me show you again. Yeah, uh, oops. You could technically use this to load like a balloon. The upward boost is pretty OP in my opinion because it can be used in numerous ways like going sideways around an object, uh, let me show you. This could also be used to circle titans or just to float as I showed before. Uh, let's get down here. 
The second thing that I want to explain is if you hold shift while reeling in, you'll be pulled straight towards your hook, cancelling out any other gravitational pull. Let me show you. Um, this is the normal reeling in. If I fall, I still, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but you still get this uh, gravitational pull downwards if you started reeling in while falling down. But if I press shift while pressing C, I just get pulled straight toward the hook's destination. I hope you saw the difference. If not, just try it in-game, you'll experience it. Whew. So, that was a lot of talk, so now let's do the walk.
so, um, okay. I wanted to do this outside the city on my previous map, but um, then I messed the recording up a little bit. Spawned in the Colossal Titan to show it to you, but uh, this uh, caused some freezes and lags. So I created a new world and I'll. Um, I won't show you the Titans because. You, uh, or not uh, the Titan shifters, since you can look at them yourself in game. But now uh, let's go over the cannons. The cannons are pretty simple. We have stationary and mob mobile. Press right click to mount it. You got this neat animation here. Move your mouse to move the cannon. Same with the mobile cannon. Only difference you can move around using W. Okay, why am I still in the air? Normally I'm supposed to fall down. There seems to be a little bug here. I'll mention it to Lion and then this will be fixed. But yeah, there are two types of ammunition grape shots and high explosive shells. Grape shots are a little bit like uh, shotgun rounds. You use shift right click on the cannon with the desired ammunition to load the cannon. Then you wait 10 seconds, there will be this click sound you just heard. Uh, okay, he moved away. And then you'll press Shift right click again to fire. You may have seen, or I, I'll show you in like a freeze frame, that there were multiple uh, projectiles, again just like in a shotgun. These are used to uh, tear off as many body parts as possible from the titans to slow them down. It doesn't deal much damage, but if all the projectiles hit an entity with like as much health as a villager, they'll die. Next we have the high explosive shell. Um, let's go, ah yeah, I'm falling down, but not as, I'm still floating. Weird, uh, let's e shoot at this tree. You heard the sounds again. Shift right click. That was pretty bad aim on my part. But as you can see the high explosive shell does what the name says. It's highly explosive. So the last thing I want to show you are the thunder spears. Who wants to volunteer? You look like it. Um, let's run away. You can launch them pressing left and right click. And they'll stick to any entity you'll shoot them at. Titan, cow, chicken, villager. I don't know if you can hit an enderman or if he dodges like with arrows. But you'll get it. Uh, let's sh mm. show you how this works to be exact. No. You'll shoot it and after a time it will start glowing and make a sound. And then it goes boom. Oh yeah, I can't use Q. And that's the thunder spear for you. Last but not least, which isn't in the current release, it's more like a little teaser, are the pure titans. So let's summon some. Yeah. There are different variations for their look. Some can have this pot belly, some can be really ripped, some can have a, an accentuated rib cage. There are different hairstyles, different eye styles, different eye colors, different noses, different mouths. 
different heights. Summon in some to see. Yeah, here you can see a pretty clear decline in height. Maybe I'll get like a three or four meter one. Yeah, that that seems to be like three, three and a half, four. They don't do much except walk around. If they had an AI, they'd probably start roaming towards the village and eat some villagers. But yeah, they won't do that yet. But they have a nice walking animation and different appearances. And this would be it for the parts I wanted to do outside the wall. Next I'll see you again in the config chapter, so to say, of this little tutorial. So let's get done with this. In order to access the config you have to go, uh, you have to click mods, attack on minecraft and config. Here you have numerous settings like can you use ODM gear while flying with Elytra, use special render, use advanced ODM gear controls. And you can just tweak it to your liking. Max length of cables is currently 50. You can technically make it to you know, set it to 1 or even... I don't know what will happen if you set it to 0. You can certainly try. Uh, let's go back to 50. This option will get removed in the future because we have some different ideas for the three-dimensional maneuver gear and yeah those options are pretty self-explanatory except for use special survival inventory and use special render I'll go over these two real quick as I mentioned before uh, mods like baubles or any other that overwrite the vanilla inventory don't work well with our mod. You either you can either have our inventory or their inventory. So if you have our mod and any of those mods installed, simply set use special survival inventory to false. Then you can still access our inventory by using K, but E will open up the other inventories uh, like the Bobbles inventory or whatever other mod you use. Use special render is pretty similar. Uh, our mod adds these l neat little animations to the cannons, rifles, etc. And those clash with some animations for other mods or other mods mechanic other mod mechanics in general. So if you happen to have some problems while running Attack on Minecraft with any other Minecraft mods before like uh, writing us on curseforge discord or whatever try turning off you special render in like i don't know 80 percent of the cases this solves the, the problem so uh, let's show you how to access the config in game Oh boy, um, do I have, no, well it doesn't matter, mm. let's go into this beautiful little city, basically press escape, mod options, and it's basically the same. Of course one thing I still, I want to show you is that you can also um, change our controls here yeah. if there are some con uh, conflicts yeah 
Uh, yeah, we uh, there are yeah. So, this would wrap this tutorial up. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it. And this was Darkest Night. I'd say peace out. <laughs>